one. What is happening, everybody? Best shark to hear Amazon and seller from beautiful San Diego. In today's episode, I have a very special guest with me, Peter Peru, the founder of e-commerce empire builders, discussing the importance of sales funnels in today's world and how they can help scale your e-commerce business. So without any further ado, Peter, what's happening, my man? How are you today? Dude, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for having me on here. I'm really excited to uh, try and uh, share as much valuable information as I can uh, with your audience here. But thank you again for having me on. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So as you guys all know, um, you know, every day I bring on an entrepreneur with a product or service that can help you, um, you know, impact, impact your life pretty much, um, help your business and take it to the next level. And as all of you guys know, sales funnels today are really the thing. And, and, and in fact, and it's really funny because just yesterday I actually did a post where, you know, I said that I scrapped my WordPress site and I switched hundred percent to click funnels just because it was so much easier to, you know, um, to work with, with funnels and build and stuff like that. So why don't you take us through who Peter is and how really did you get to this point today? <laughs> oh man, I like to, um, I always start these off. I always love to say I'm a 10 year overnight success story. Right? So <laughs> it's been like, you see what's on the surface, but like, it's been a crazy 10 years, like 10 years ago, uh, I got into online marketing when I was a freshman in college, started doing affiliate marketing sort of things made a little bit in, of money in college, nothing huge, but you know, it showed me that there was actually like, it was possible, right? It was actually possible to make money online. Like the, for everybody remembers their first dollar they make online. It's like, whoa, I just, I created something and it, I have money out. Like it was crazy. We were only, I was probably only making ever like max 200 bucks a week, but in college you feel like, like the man, like you're like, I'm making okay. money. Like it's crazy. Um, right. So after college, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, I uh, had to go get a full time job. Um, but I always had this itch, like while I was working nine to five, I was like, there has to be more here, right? There, there has to be something else, right? Like I can't just like, because I, I, I looked at the people that I was working with and I was like, is that going to be me 40 years from now? Is that going to be me sitting in that cubicle and like looking forward to having like my donut every single day? Like, I, and it just like was like totally like, it just left me like with such a bad feeling like in my gut. Absolutely. And um, I took some of the experience that I had from affiliate marketing. I started thinking about like, how can I now build a real business? Like one of my own, like I'm, I love affiliate marketing. It's great. But I was like, how can I build a business that like I get all the money off of not just promoting other people's products. So I got into uh, e-commerce. That's when I discovered e-commerce. I was like, Oh, I love selling physical products. Let me, let me start here. Right. So I took a little bit of money I had at the time. Uh, it was only about like $5,000. And, uh, and that little $5,000 investment um, in the first year turned into a business that was generating fifty dollars to $80,000 per month uh, in sales, which was incredible. And that was across five products that we had. Um, unfortunately, uh, that was short lived. We ended up having uh, some false IP claims made against us um, oh, from an Amazon, uh, some Amazon competitors that we had. Um, and it really like, it, it shook me up a lot because I was still working full time at, during this period. Uh, but I, I thought I like had something, you know, I was like, oh man, I'm going to like quit my job. I'm like starting to pay myself slowly for my business. Like I'm on the track and then to have that pulled out from under me, like in the, and the thing is like, I know a lot of people watching this on Amazon and I think Amazon's a great traffic source where you get free sales, right. And you get to right. utilize, but like, it made me realize in that moment when I, when I kind of like lost that business was like. I didn't have emails. I didn't have customers. Like it, it was kind of tough for me to, to swallow. So I kind of went through like a little bit of a dark period of, yeah. uh, during the time of my life. Like after losing that business, I was like blaming everybody but myself. <laughs> so uh, on this, I was blaming Amazon. I was blaming everybody but me. And uh, a couple of years went by and I kind of like, there was a book back there that I, that I opened up and it was actually called the slight edge. And it was one of the first books that I ever uh, read on entrepreneurship, like back when I was in college and I wrote things in this book. And one morning before I was going to work, I, I don't know why I just opened it. And in that book, it like makes you write in it. Like, Hey, what are your like five, what, how much revenue do we want to be making in your business five years from now? And then what are the things that you need to do in the next five years to make that happen? And I had wrote in that journal, Hey, I, in five years from now, I want to be making, you know, $20,000 uh, uh, of net profit, like in my businesses. Um, and it was closing in like, since I wrote that I was closing in on that five year mark, 
right? And I was like, right. I'm not even making like three thousand dollars a month at, at, for my job right now. Like, what happened? What happened to me? Like, like I was so right. into this entrepreneurship thing, and then I lost this business, and then like I lost all sight of my dreams, everything that I that I was working towards, and. I went into work that day and I was like, you know what? Like, let me revisit this. I don't want to have wasted all of these things that I've done over these past, you know, probably at that point, like five, six years that right. I'm just going to let that all go to waste. So I started looking, okay, how can I build an e-commerce business now that, that I have full control of that I can also sell on Amazon, but I also want some control. I, I need that control. Like, like I don't want, you know, if I'm selling on you know, Amazon, Walmart, wherever, like, even if one of those goes away, like I still have a business, right? Absolutely. So. So what I did is I started looking, hey, you know what, look, what kind of business do I want to start this time? Because like, this time I was like, I'm not going to just sell random, random crap. And like, thing is like, when I was doing it on Amazon, like I was just selling random stuff. Like, man, I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to launch products that are best sellers. I don't care. I just want to make money. And, and, and the thing is, it was nice, but like, it wasn't a business that I like cared about. Right. And I wanted, I wanted to be in a business that I actually enjoyed myself, one where I was my own perfect customer. So I started thinking about like, hey, what kind of niche would I want to be in for like the long term? Which niche would I actually be proud of in 10 years from now running this kind of business? And that's when I discovered, hey, you know what? Like fishing was something I did always with my dad growing up. Fishing is something I still do like on a monthly basis. Unfortunately, just really busy now. I used to go every single weekend. But I started a fishing business in, in the fishing niche, specifically in the bass fishing niche. Now, um, when I started this, I, I started – finding and sourcing products and selling them on, on, a, on a Shopify, right? So basically an easy website builder. And to make a long story short, started getting some good sales from, from our Shopify store, but there was still a problem. Like the key problem I think a lot of people miss is paying yourself from your business and that sales do not equal, equal profits, right? Like uh -huh. the most important thing, I don't care if you make a hundred grand a month in your business, but if you're only taking home five or three grand a month, that's stupid right. because guess what? Like, what if you what if you can just make twenty thousand dollars in sales a month and take home five or ten? Right. right? It's the same exact thing. People think volume means profit. It doesn't right. matter, right? And that's what was happening with my Shopify store. Like, I was making sales, right, and I was growing, but I wasn't actually profitable. Like, I was just basically breaking even, maybe making a little bit of money. And I was actually in a mastermind right. group at this time. I was still working full time. Um, I was in a mastermind group. Um, it was Ryan Moran. I don't know if you've ever heard of Ryan Moran. I have. Um, yeah, yeah. He has like a podcast or something. Um, right. And he had the, and I was in his mastermind group and he had these guests come on. It was like a Zoom call or whatever it was. And it was a new software that was just being released. And it was ClickFunnels, right? ClickFunnels had just launched. This was like five, four or five years ago. And ClickFunnels right. demonstrating this software that they were launching or had already launched. And it it just opened my eyes to the possibilities. Like everybody in that mastermind group was like, oh, it's it's okay. Right. But everyone's like, oh, why am I going to go through all this trouble of setting this up if I could just rely on Amazon sales forever? Right. I was like, like, guys, you not see the possibility here? Like we take back control, right? Like think about like, and this is what the mindset shift I want you guys to have is like, think about the maximum cart value that you can make on an Amazon. Say you sell like a fishing lure for $9.99 on Amazon. That person comes to Amazon and you make $9.99. You cannot make any more unless that person goes to your, literally your Amazon storefront clicks other products, adds them to your car, or the Amazon algorithm decides to help you out and shows yours like in the frequently bought together, right? Absolutely. Like that's the max revenue you can make. But with the funnel, right? You can not only like have full control of everything, you can literally right. like offer quantity break discounts, which I always recommend, like give them a better and better deal, right? Make it fun for people to buy. Like people don't think like that people would buy more than one of your product. They will. Like I've had students that literally they're selling hundred dollar products and people buy more than one, right? Don't take the fun out of buying for people. Absolutely. Right? There was this thing called like order bumps that you can have as well, which are like easy toss in items to your right. product, right? And then you can upsell all your customers, all these different things, right? Literally. So you could take that $9.99 product that you're selling on Amazon, right? Plug it into a funnel, leave it on Amazon. That's fine. Keep it selling on Amazon, but take it out and put it into a funnel because you're literally going to 10x the, the revenue you're going to make. Like if you're if, if, like any of the private clients that I, we build funnels for, like Shopify sellers, Amazon FBA sellers, like we always say, hey, let's just take that best seller. Let's plug it into the funnel. And right. you, you're almost nine out of 10 that we've done like this for is you in, immediately will see at least like a four and a half extra uh, uh, increase in average cart value.
So immediately, because you can upsell them different products, you can upsell them the same product, right? right? And the most important thing, and this is what was the um, thing that changed my life. This was what allowed me to quit my job. Like if anybody, it, it take one thing from this thing, like this whole thing is, and this is what I preach every single day is that reoccurring revenue is like the most important thing in your business. Like having some sort of subscription, a membership site, it doesn't need to be physical products. It could be, hey, you know what? Let's say you're in a fitness space and you sell like fitness bands and fitness equipment, whatever, right? There's nothing saying that you can't create like a membership site where you charge people, let's say $10 a month where they get access to like training videos, uh, meal prep guides, um, anything that helps them get the result that they want, right? Everybody has problems and you're, you have to be the solver of those problems. Absolutely. And having that there and putting that into your funnel is like, it's like, it's literally like pouring gasoline on a fire guys, because to me, and, and this is like something I say a lot. I know I've been talking a lot here, uh, but I just get really excited about this stuff. You're man. good, man. You're um, good. Because like for me, and this is a lot of people, a lot of Shopify sellers think like this. They are only focused on front end things. Right. And I'm telling you guys like, back end sales is where the money is at like my funnel if 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 a funnel even loses me money on the on the front end i'm okay right. with it i mean of course if even if i lose a ton like it probably means okay let's change something but even if i lose money like i'm okay because guess what i know that there's a percentage of the people that are coming through my funnel that are going to join my monthly recurring plan or take a few upsells here and there right, right. that's going that's to true. really you know, drive, drive the business. So like the continuity piece guys, uh, is, is huge to have that like interweaved inside of, inside of the funnel. So long winded answer of my, uh, of my 10 years, uh, right there, well down into like five minutes right there. That is awesome, man. That's, I mean, that's one hell of a story. And you know, every single entrepreneur I've brought, it was like, it was like this thing that was dawning on them that, you know, they were in the middle of something and all of a sudden just bam, something clicked and then just everything exploded. Now, one thing I want to, you know, address uh, one thing that I totally forgot and I just saw right behind you, you are a two comma club winner. So yeah. I want to make sure that I address that, you know, um, you know, so that's if, our fishing business right there. <laughs> if any of you guys don't know what that means, can you please tell us what that means? So the, the two comma club is from ClickFunnels. It's obviously the sales funnel software that we use right. to build funnels. Um, and they give out awards when you do seven figures. So that business did multi seven figures, but we got the award. <laughs> so, so, um, so Jed, just wanted to make sure that uh, that was addressed. Now, that's awesome, bro. Um, why don't you tell us what exactly do you do today? Um, what are the services you provide, and how you know how can someone really join the club and kind of take their business to the next level with you? Yeah. So, so there will be a link. I believe you have it pinned down below where you can learn more how I set up these businesses for with funnels. Uh, and this right. is for those of you that are like completely newbie too, because like you can, you, you could start with the funnel. Absolutely. Um, but uh, so I, I, I'm the founder of e-commerce empire builders uh, podcast, YouTube, you guys can check it out. Um, basically we put out content helping people, you know, use sales funnels for e-commerce and building in these subscription platforms. We've had some amazing student success stories. Um, I mean, dozens of people doing 10 K a month, 50 K a month. It, it's just incredible uh, yeah. seeing that. Um, so that does take up a good portion of my time doing private client work with, with that. But we are also, launching our uh, our next e-commerce business uh probably in like two three months from now um it's i can't talk too much about it but essentially it's going to be like in the in the nootropic space which i am uh i'm so excited for i've always wanted to do supplements but one little forewarning just to tell you guys like who are thinking about ever doing supplements it's not it it's been like eight months like in development doing right. this thing. Uh, there's a lot more regulation that goes into it. So those are gonna be my two main focuses probably moving forward. Um, we sold this fishing business probably around eight months ago now. Um, so had a nice paycheck right there, it allowed me to start focusing on e-commerce empire builders. But for me, me personally, I love e-commerce. So like, like it's, I love, don't, I love e-commerce empire builder. I love putting out content, but I love to like, have some sort of e physical product as well that I can sell to people. So that's where we're, we're doing our, uh, our supplement coming up here in probably the next two, two, three months. That is awesome, man. That is amazing. So um, as uh, Peter said, if any of you guys that are watching today that are trying to, you know, start um, learning how really funnels work and how, um, you know, how you can build them inside of your, your business, be sure to check out the pinned comment in the comment section. And as he said, and look, Amazon is awesome. Like I am an Amazon seller, but 
as many of you guys know that lately I have been really, you know, kind of shifting my focus on to taking our customers into, uh, into inside of funnels. Because as Peter was saying earlier, you know, Amazon is great and all, but as you all know, they like to kind of hold on to their customers. You know, we mm -hmm. don't get their emails. We don't get their, you know, uh, we get their phone numbers, but we don't really get any, any information about who the customers are. And if you guys know who Russell Bronson is, he always says the traffic you own is literally the best traffic there is mm -hmm. because you can literally retarget them. You can, you know, send them uh, new offers you have. You can, you know, when you launch new products, you can send them out to them, uh, just literally anything. And, and as Peter was saying, and instead of, you know, having a $16.99 product or $20.99 and the sale ending right there, you know, you can have uh, bumps, you can have uh, um, upsells, you can have all these different things inside of your funnel that can literally take the customer and an awesome shopping experience. You know, it's like mm -hmm. going to Walmart, you know, you, you got a car and just walking down the aisle and then you're just, you know, putting in your car, you know, the, you don't go to Walmart to only buy one product. So it doesn't have to be only one product they come to when landing on your uh, sales funnel. So I know you already touched a little bit about this, um, about, you know, um, you have sold, one business and you're going into a new business and then you know you've got your uh, your e-commerce uh, uh built empire builders um what is what do you see yourself doing in the next three to five years really so so for us it's going to be and it, this is currently in the works is uh and i actually got this this really got ingrained for me from uh dan Locke, believe it or not um, right. i actually had him answer this question uh live on his stream i was like oh awesome um and I asked him, I was like, hey, I, you know, I built multiple business now to, to seven figures, but like I've never been able to get like to the to the eight figure mark. And like what what is what is that? Because I'm telling you guys, like, like I'm not like for me, seven figures, like I already know the supplement will get there. Like I already know it because I, I know the process to get there. Right. Right. And every time like making your first dollar online is a mindset shift. Making your first ten thousand dollars is a mindset shift. Making your first million online is is a mindset shift. Right. But then there's also a mindset shift even that goes from like seven figures to eight figures. From eight figures to nine. I mean, think about it, guys. That's that's ten. That's literally ten x. Right? right. That's that's a huge huge jump. Um, and there are things in there where you can't really do it alone. Um, so for me, it's going to be all about like putting together like a, a rock star team and identifying things that. Like I have to do in the business that nobody else can do. So for example, e-commerce empire builders, we probably have now, I'm um, trying to lean up the team a little bit. We have about eight, nine people that work on this team, right? Like, so I don't have to necessarily be like scheduling YouTube videos, posting podcasts, social media posts, like all that stuff. Right. The only thing I do is things like this, right? Where it's, it has to be me, right? Nobody else right. can do it. Like making content. Right. The second my content's done, it goes into a Google drive and I, I'm done. Right, like I'm done. My focus is getting students, my students' results, right, and also shooting content. That's it. Everything else, I have to rely on a team for to help me. Same right. thing, right? And I, and of, of course, there's a process still. It's not fully like this yet. I'm doing a lot. Like I work, I work my ass off every single day, probably 14 hours a day, right? But you gotta, you gotta want it, right? Like for me, I, to, to me, like people that say they go go retire on an island with retire on an island with a laptop and all that stuff, like. Uh, you maybe you could do that if you're only happy making like five grand a month. But like for me, like you, what if you want to build something big, right? And you want to go big, like you gotta, you gotta like really, really, you know, put, like go at it. Um, so same thing with my supplement business. I'm gonna start that one right out of the gate with like a, a, a full, full team of people and putting people in the right positions. Because what I see a lot of people doing with Shopify, Amazon, e-commerce is like you guys are way too focused on like doing the nitty gritty things in your business, right. right? Like for me, like I used to run my own Facebook ads when I started, right? I know Facebook ads really, really well. Uh, right. I love the Facebook algorithm. I love Google ads as well. I think that's like one of my, that's my favorite platform. But um, what you need to understand is like, just because you're good at it doesn't mean you should be doing it, right? right. Because if somebody like, guys, like think about all the changes that happen in the Facebook algorithm. Every couple months, there's something coming out. You as a CEO, should not be the one running your Facebook ads. You should be having somebody that is a full, like not maybe full time, but an agency or somebody that runs those kinds of things for you that keeps up to date with all the latest things and can implement those changes. So you need to learn to put yourself into a, a, a CEO role. And I know that's hard to do when you're just starting out and you're on a budget. Yes, you gotta do all this stuff yourself. But once you hit like, I believe six figures in your business, there's no reason you can't start 
putting uh, putting and hiring people and putting people in places where they're going to be better than you, right? I think a lot of entrepreneurs have a hard time giving up a little bit of control of their business. Um, but that's something I've gotten better with, right? Of course, like, and this, let me preface this guys is like, nobody will ever care about your business more than you. Um, it sucks. Trust me. Um, but it, honestly, like you, you, that's what, that's part of the hiring process is like identifying people that, that, that will care. Right. Like, of course, a lot of people are driven by money, but like, if you create like a good environment for people, give them that freedom, give them like me, when I hire people into my business, I want them to feel like they are entrepreneurs. So right. I don't want to be like a micromanager. I want to hire entrepreneurs into my businesses and feel like, hey, you know what? They have creative control. Hey, they want to test out these new ads or these sales angles or messages. Fine. Do it. Right. Show me the results. I want to let people um, have that creativity, have that control, not necessarily me being like, oh, nitty gritty. Like, no, I don't want to be a micromanager. Right. And it comes down. It's, it takes time. Right. Like it takes a lot of time to find good people like that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be my focus for the next two, three years, five years is going to be like identifying amazing people that are like, you know, the, and these people will come to you guys. Like, like one of the people that I hired for, for e-commerce empire builders, like I could just tell you, he was, just, he was swimming towards me. Like he was, right. he was coming towards me always, you know, helping. And I, I was like, man, I'm always here. Boom. Brought him on, brought him on the team. Right. Cause he cares. He loves the mission. He saw amazing results. His life was changed. And I'm like, Hey, you know what? Like, would love to have you have you on here as well. So that's going to be my main focus. Uh, that's actually what Dan Locke even said. He's like, you got to focus on the team. Uh, you got to, you got to learn to trust other individuals with key parts of your business. So yeah, that's going to be my, uh, my main focus. That's amazing, man. That is pretty awesome. You know, um, I'm not sure if, um, you know, but I know a lot of my audience knows, but I come from the restaurant industry and having to manage 20, 30 people at once. It was very difficult, especially when I first got started to kind of, you know, not wear 15 hats at the same time. You know, I was the kitchen manager. I was the ordering manager. I was the, the you know, the the owner. I was this. And then it kind of took a lot of me to really like say, okay, you're in charge of hiring and firing. You're in charge of this. You're in charge of that. So, um, and one of my actually very early on mentors told me um, as a business owner, you need to work on your business, not in your business. You need to understand every single aspect of your business, yes, but don't work inside of it. Work on it. So that's pretty awesome. One last thing before you, um, we let you go, brother. I know you're you're busy man, and we don't want to, you know, uh, hold you off anymore. Um, what would you say for anyone out there thinking of starting e-commerce or wanting to start e-commerce, but still kind of has that hesitation? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Is it too, you know, too saturated right now? Um, I don't know if I can make the shift from retail or offline to online or whatever. So I believe e-commerce, like, of course, there's always going to be people in multiple industries. And, and notice this, guys, in advertising, like people like throwing hooks out there saying, oh, e-commerce is dead. Hey, affiliate marketing is dead. Like people are just trying to grab your attention. Look, be aware of that. But I believe e-commerce is the best industry to get into. I mean, it is only booming. People are only continuing to buy more money online, right? Absolutely. Okay? And that means, yeah, there's going to be more e-commerce sellers that are coming out there. So one thing I would stress for you to, to really focus on, um, and this is like, especially those, even those of you that like to like jump on product trend after trend or yeah. just selling short term is think long term and focus on, as you start your business, focus on a niche that you actually want to solve problems for. Right. Uh, I'm telling you like guys, like I sold every, like I sold gavels, pegboards, Montessori toys, like all these random ass things on the internet just to make money. And I know the feeling you want to make money. You want to quit your job. You want to do all these amazing things. But I'm telling you, if you actually, like I wasn't able to quit my job until I started a business I actually cared about like hundred percent. Right. right? Uh, all everything before that was just like throwing, throwing stuff at the, at, at the wall and hoping something right. sticks. Right. right. So I recommend you like really, and this is the hardest part, hardest part by far is finding a niche that you're willing to go and solve problems for and also be willing to go over all the obstacles and hurdles and roadblocks that you're going to hit along the way, right? Because I can tell you the people that make it in this, right? You, again, you're going to hit roadblocks along the way. And if you're in a niche that you don't like, you're just going to, you're just going to quit. You're going to quit at the first sign of failure. But right. if you're interested in it and you love it and you're like, you believe in the offers that you put out there that you feel like, hey, you know, my product is the best one out here. My offers are are helping people and you feel like your customers are getting a disservice not buying from you, right? right. Then yeah. that's not a, a little hurdle or a roadblock isn't going to stop you trying to get that message out there. So okay. I'd highly focus on, and I like to keep things simple um, personally is like, I always recommend people just put together one offer, right? 
best selling, find a best selling product or find a best selling fishing lure and then wrap it around an offer that is going to steal your, uh, your, your competitors, customers, right? Like what can you add in there? What kind of bonuses, what kind of information products can we mix in there to have people buying from us instead of Amazon, Walmart, wherever, right? Super important to understand. All you need is that one offer to start. You need one funnel to plug it into that's fully optimized. And then you need one traffic source. If you focus on just each of those things, one at a time, like you're going to make it. Right. And not jumping from next product, next product, next funnel, next traffic source. Like some people will be like, oh, I tried Facebook ads for a week. Didn't work. Okay. I'm going to YouTube ads. Oh, YouTube ads don't work. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Google. Oh, you know, none of this works. I'm just going to go sell and shop. Find out. Oh, this doesn't work. I'm going to go on Amazon. Like, don't, right. you can't jump. Like if one person could do this, like anybody can do it. Right. Like right. It's, so, so focus on that one, one thing at a time. Um, and, uh, and, 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 uh, focus on solving problems, uh, for your niche. Right. That would be like my biggest piece of advice. That's awesome, man. Well, um, Peter, I really appreciate you coming live here with us. Um, you know, I'm, I know that a lot of value was dropped here. Any of you guys that are watching today, um, be sure to check out the the uh, link in the pinned comment if you want to get started with with you know launching your first funnel or or just learning how the whole process works. If you're completely new to it, um, I definitely highly suggest it. Or or let's say even if you're just going into e-commerce, you, know, you want to really start it right from the fir- you know from the get go. Be sure to check out the uh, pinned comment in the uh, comment section below. Uh, Peter, awesome having you, brother. With uh, you, you know, m- an honor for me and a pleasure having you here. Um, thank you for for everything you've done, and thank you guys that are watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. You all have a great day, and uh, take care. Thanks for having me.